Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar for Drums Etc. Magazine. And today what we're going to be doing is something that I feel is very important when learning any type of material, and that's to modify. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take three little pieces that you could find in various snare drum solos, and we're going to move them around the drum set. It's one thing to just learn something how it's written. When you actually put your personality into it, that's what helps you kind of really bring it into your playing and make it something that's a little bit more yours. And it's more likely going to actually work its way into your own playing from there. This first example is an interesting snare drum pattern that we find pretty commonly within different snare solo pieces. Let me play this first example for you just on the snare drum. Make sure while you're practicing that, you pay attention to all the details. Make sure your dynamics are good, your loud accents are as loud as they can be while still being comfortable, your unaccented notes are drastically quieter, and especially that sticking. Without the sticking, how we're going to phrase it on the drum set is going to make far less sense. So now let's take a look at how we're going to do this. For this particular example, we're going to leave the first two flams exactly how they were. Then we're going to modify a little bit. We're going to take the first part of the sticking where we have right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, so paradiddles, we're going to take the first two right hands that are just the single note on their own, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and we're going to accent those with crashes and bass drums. So let's just try that first. We won't even bother with the toms. We're going to go with the two flams and then beats two and three within sixteenth notes, crashing those individual right hands. We're going to leave everything on the snare drum. We're going to forget about the toms. So here's kind of 1B. The next step that we got to do is we're going to take those two right hands that were on the snare drum in between there, throw them on the floor tom. Check this out. Now while we're embellishing, of course we can accent that as well. Let's try it one more time. Now the final step is to add in those last three notes. So we're going to go snare, rack, floor with right, left, right. We're going to make all these last three loud. Again, while we're embellishing them on the drum set, the dynamics that made sense on the snare drum may need to be changed to make our example work a little bit better on the kit. And again, we're not trying to keep it completely verbatim. We're trying to make something a little more musical. We're going to turn this into a drum fill. Let's try the whole thing. Let's try that with a beat. So as you can see, just a regular bar that we would have played on the snare drum in some random solo somewhere can be a really cool and interesting fill that was probably something different than you normally would have played in a regular drum fill context. Now the beat that I used doesn't matter. Play something that's comfortable to you. Try and make it into a context you're actually going to use. Don't necessarily take just what I'm doing, and don't even just take these three examples. Take as much material as you have that you like from different pieces that you've worked on. Let's take a look at number two. I'm going to play it for you on the snare drum. The challenge that most people have with playing things like that is making sure that your flams that aren't accented are just as quiet as the rest of your unaccented notes. So again, pay real close attention to all of your dynamics. 
So what we're gonna do with this on the kit is we're gonna make it kind of a really wide flam. Instead of them being nice and tight and crisp like we had on the snare drum, let's space them out a little bit. We're gonna go between the floor tom and the snare drum. So we're gonna have floor tom and snare drum flam, left hand accent on the snare drum. Then we're gonna move up to the cymbal. And I'm gonna probably mess around and play with different cymbals while I'm doing this. Next up, instead of that left hand, we're gonna play a bass drum. So we have flam, snare, cymbal, bass drum. And then we're gonna end it off with one more flam the same way. So another floor tom, snare drum, flam. That pattern's essentially gonna happen two times in a bit. So it's almost gonna happen three times and then we're gonna fit it into the bar. Let's hear it nice and slow and I'm gonna play it across the drum set. Experiment with the width of your flams. What I mean by that is how close the notes are together. Let me play for you a couple wide ones and a couple tight ones, just so you can hear the difference. Different widths of flams work at different tempos. Let's try the pattern. as we did with the last one. Let's try this with a rock beat. So that way we can put it into a context where we would actually use something like this. That one's a ton of fun. So before we call it a day, let's take one more. Let's just hear it on the snare drum, nice and slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep all those rolls on the snare drum. The individual notes, we're going to play around between crashes with the bass drum. There's going to be a floor tom in there, a couple snare drum accents. Let's just hear it nice and slow. As with the other ones, let's put this with some time. So the main thing that I want you to take away from this is to modify. Don't always just leave things at face value as they are in books or any other type of learning material. Make sure you take things and make them your own. That's the best way for things to work their way into your playing and become part of who you are behind the instrument. Until next time, I'll see you guys inside the next issue.